Hi, my name is Jonathan Olivares, and this is my tutorial on chronic disease in the Indigenous population. In today's tutorial, we're going to have a look at what chronic disease is, what causes chronic disease, chronic disease in the Indigenous population, and we're going to zone in on one program that assists in the prevention of chronic disease. So what is chronic disease? The World Health Organization defines chronic disease as diseases and conditions which develop over a long period of time and are not caused by infectious agents. They are the outcomes of various genetic, physiological, environmental and lifestyle factors. Chronic disease is also called non-communicable disease or chronic conditions. They are the leading cause of mortality in the world. The main five chronic diseases are cardiovascular conditions, such as coronary heart disease and stroke, there's cancers like lung cancer and bowel cancer, diabetes, respiratory diseases, including asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, and there's chronic kidney disease as well. Other ones include mental disorders like depression, there's arthritis, osteoporosis, uh, these are the minor ones, um, there's tooth decay. Most chronic diseases are rarely cured and they don't usually resolve spontaneously. Once present, they often persist through a person's life, so there's generally a need for long-term management by the individuals and help from the professionals. So here we have some risk factors uh, for chronic disease. Risk factors can range from tobacco use, excessive alcohol consumption, illicit drug use, uh, not getting enough exercise, uh, obesity, poor eating patterns, and, and having high blood pressure, not managing those things. Um, all these have a, a big effect on health. Many of these can, can be changed or controlled uh, to improve health outcomes uh, or to, re to reduce the chance of ill health. There are many other factors that combine to affect overall health. Factors like where someone lives, what their environment is like, their genetics, their income, education level, and relationships with friends and family. These all contribute to the development of chronic diseases. Just in the last week, three of my closest friends and, and a relative have been diagnosed with cancer. And that's not an uncommon story to be what we as a community call constantly in grief, loss and trauma. I'm Janine Mohammed. I'm a Naranga Ghana woman, mother of five, and I'm living on Ngunnawal country. When I went to primary school, the amount of time that I had off, whether it be going with my mum to the doctors or, you know, um, staying away from school because we didn't have enough food in the house so that we could actually go to school. It was at that period in time that I started to realise that we experienced a very different Australia to other Australians. Why does Aboriginal people suffer with all these, the life expectancy gaps and chronic diseases? The medical component of it is only one part of what we've got to focus on. There is centuries of things that have happened and contributed to where Aboriginal people are now. So this section, we're going to talk about the chronic disease in the Indigenous population. So first, let's have a look at how many Indigenous people there are. Uh, so in, in June 2016, um, there, was, there was estimated to be 798,400 people uh, in Australia that were that considered themselves Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander. That makes up 3.3% of total the total Australian population. Let's just have a look at this table. Um, this is the life expectancy at birth for Indigenous compared to non-Indigenous. Uh, so, so with the information we've got here, Indigenous, we see that males' life expectancy is 69.1. The females is 73.7 .7 for Indigenous. Non-Indigenous, males 79.7 and females 83.1. As the third column here is the, the gap between those. So as a group, we can see that Indigenous Australians experience widespread disadvantage and health inequality. Chronic diseases are the leading cause of illness, disability and death in the Indigenous population. They accounted for more than half of the top 20 leading causes of death in the Indigenous people. They also accounted for nearly three in four deaths in Indigenous Australians in 2016. Among Indigenous Australians, the most common conditions or events causing avoidable mortality were ischemic heart disease at 22%, diabetes 12%, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or CAPD 7%, 
and cancer, 7%. To put it into perspective, suicide is uh, 11% and road traffic injuries at 7%. Indigenous Australians generally have a greater risk of ill health compared to other Australians. And as I mentioned before, they have a shorter life expectancy. One reason for this is their socioeconomic disadvantage. On average, Indigenous Australians have lower incomes, higher rates of unemployment, lower educational attainment, and more overcrowded households. This socioeconomic disadvantage places them at a greater risk of engaging in chronic disease risk factors, such as smoking, alcohol misuse, and being overweight or obese. Smoking is the single most preventable cause of ill health and deaths in Australia. In 2014 and 15, around 42% of Indigenous people aged 15 and over were current smokers. 31% of Indigenous people aged 15 and over reported that they drank alcohol at what was considered a risky level on at least one single occasion. This is known as a short-term risk. 15% of Indigenous people aged 15 and over reported that they drank alcohol at lifetime risky levels. It's said that one third of the burden of disease in Indigenous Australians could be prevented by reducing exposure to these modifiable risk factors. So just looking at this table, down the bottom, current daily smoker. In 2014, 2015, the rate for Indigenous Australians for tobacco smoking was 2.8 times that compared to non-Indigenous Australians. This is going to take us into the next part of the tutorial where we're going to look at a program that tries to address this. So here I've just listed some of the, the, the programs that are funded by the Department of Health. Um, they all kind of address uh, Indigenous chronic disease management and prevention out in rural areas, uh, looking at, you know, the access uh, as well as providing, you know, a little workforce that can facilitate for it. Um, just at the last one, Indigenous Australians Health Program, uh, I'm going to talk on the next slide uh, about this program, uh, specific, specifically tackling Indigenous smoking. And then we're gonna look at one kind of activity that they, they fund as well. So this is the Tackle Indigenous Smoking Program. Um, so this program has a number of parts. The, you can see in this picture here, uh, there's, there's different elements of the program. One of them is regional grants to organization. Um, so they pretty much give funds uh, for evidence-based tobacco control activities uh, to meet the needs of different population groups within different regions. They also have a, a national best practice unit. Uh, this unit supports organizations uh, with the tackling indigenous smoking kind of matters um, through research, uh, providing information, giving resources, uh, specifically on tobacco control. They also aim to provide capacity for the quitline services to provide accessible and appropriate services uh, for indigenous people. They also provide training for the quit skills program. So this is the logo for the Bega Gun Biringu um, Health Service, uh, and and they they have an activity um, that the the TIS funds. Um, so their aim is to provide uh, smoking cessation activities and information to communities in the Goldfields region of Western Australia. Under the name Tobacco Action Mob, uh, Bega uses a variety of ways to get the anti-smoking message out to the communities. So the Tobacco Action Mob. Um, they go out and they go to schools, uh, they work in regional prisons, they work with community groups, uh, and they also provide group and one-on-one -on -one smoking cessation counseling sessions. Uh, in 2007, the Tobacco Action Mob, they ran this Indigenous Hip Hop project where they, they worked with young Aboriginal people from the town Kal Kalgoorlie. Uh, in this project, they engaged with the children uh, through a music video and they kind of got them involved, the kids were singing, um, rapping, dancing, um, and, and it was all about smoking cessation. So this obviously provided a good opportunity for the local young people to learn about how to, how to live smoke free. The video forms part of the Tobacco Action Mob's local health promotion campaign as well, uh, which includes radio and TV ads. So just in regards to the, this, the program, the, the hip hop dancing one, um, so some positives about it, you know, it, it engages the kids, um, it, the community gets involved, uh, the participants uh, are used as role models in the campaign. Uh, it educates the community in regards to smoking cessation, which in turn will increase uh, the prevention of chronic diseases. Uh, the negative, it, it's, it's so it's limited, it's small. Um, it's hard to reach all the communities in, in, in the same manner. 
uh, and then there's going to be limited funding for projects like this. So just in conclusion to this tutorial, uh, we learned what chronic disease is, uh, what are the causes of chronic disease and the risk factors of it. Uh, we had a look at what chronic disease looks like in the indigenous population. And then we zoned in on one program that attempts to prevent chronic disease in communities. So now I'm just going to play this hip hop video uh, from that project, uh, the one on smoking cessation. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much.